I wanted to show you guys the final result before we get started. Here on the left is what we start out with. This is a print that came right off the print bed. So nothing has been done to it yet. And this is what we end up with. All of the supplies that I've used are in the description below, including the model, the paint, and the filament, as well as an optional step that I'll explain at the end of the video. I'd like to apologize for the uh, shitty audio that you're gonna hear. I had to record this outside because I don't have a uh, proper setup uh, inside. The lighting just wasn't good enough. You couldn't see shit. So apologize for that. I tried to edit it in post, but there's only so much you can do. If I get a better setup at some point, I'll re-record this video and uh, include some new tips that I've kind of figured out uh, to make this look even better, to get a more textured effect that looks a little bit more natural. But I'll save that for another video. Enjoy. So you want to achieve a cool metallic look on your 3D prints. Well, I'm going to show you the cheapest and easiest way to do so. So step one would be to pick up some silk PLA some copper silk PLA. I know this says silk red bronze, but uh, on the website it's actually listed as silk copper. So pick some of this up. You don't have to go with this brand in particular, though this is one of my favorites. Um, and then go ahead and 3D print your object, at which point you should have this. Now, if this is what you want, this perfectly clean, polished copper, then, well, that's pretty much it. You're done. So uh, yeah, thanks guys for watching, and <laughs> so, of course, uh, this isn't where we're going to end it. This does look nice, but we can make it look a little bit nicer, I think. Uh, real copper isn't like this, and brass, for that matter, and bronze aren't like this in real life. You're not going to find this in the wild. This is typically what it looks like. Granted, this is a bit of an extreme example. Ugh. Does that show up on camera? Let's do it this way. There we go. That is an antique fire extinguisher and a heavy one at that. So, as you can see, there are a lot of colors there. There's a lot of browns, there are a lot of uh, teals and almost uh, white blues. So we're going to have to imitate that on this. So there are several things you're going to need. One, uh, some paper towels and some isopropyl alcohol. This is to clean the mesh, or not the mesh, the, uh, the model, clean the print. We're going to just remove any sort of uh, fingerprints, any sort of oils, grime, dust. Get a nice clean print. And of course, you'll also need some paints. Uh, I picked these up that I just dropped on the ground. I picked these up at, uh, actually found them in my house, but I looked it up online and on Amazon, they're like 10 bucks and this is acrylic. So you don't have to use anything fancy, just some cheap paint. All right, now that I've picked up my paint, uh, let's look at what else we need. We need just a couple of little containers. I'm using some bottle caps and some random trash I had lying around. We're gonna need some water because we're gonna be doing uh, a lot of diluting a lot of washes. Uh, also, if you guys want this model, I'll include a link to the artist's profile uh, that did it. He's an amazing artist and he's doing a Frankenstein's monster. Next, this is Nosferatu, the vampire. Um, he's going to be doing, I think, all of the like classic horror monster sculpts, so it might be worth checking out if you like it. Anyway, so what I want to do is I want to imitate this this, I don't know if you can see that on camera, that uh, nice brown. We're going to do that as the first layer. So I'm going to wet my brush a little bit. Let's pick out a nice brown. I think this burnt sienna looks pretty good. I'm going to squeeze out just a tiny little bit of it. Something like that. And then I'm going to squeeze out a little bit of this. This, look, this is raw umber. It looks almost black, but it's not. Just the tiniest little bit to darken it up a little bit. We've already got this nice highlight and then the darker areas around it, just due to shadowing. But I want to add a little bit darker uh, color to it still. All right, so we'll just mix that up. 
I want this to be really, really, really thin. And I'm just going to start hitting it. This should knock back a lot of the shine in a lot of areas. Let's just go ahead and do that. Just being pretty sloppy about it. Doesn't need to be. Doesn't need to be accurate. I'm actually going to take a little bit more of this burnt sienna. I'm just going to cover the entire model with this. I should like dilute this a little bit more. So I've been working with much smaller prints when I was doing these tests and I had to use a lot less paint. Clearly we're going to have to go a lot more. We're going to use a lot more paint this time around. Now I'm no painting expert, in fact this is really the first time I've done this on uh, the first couple of tests that I did. I did two so that's really about the extent of my experience but I think I got a nice little effect so I figured people might want to know. We are getting some bubbles, but I'm not worried about that. Just covering every surface. Alright, we'll just let that dry for a little bit, and then take a look at the result. Alright, so now that it's dry, you can see we've knocked back some of the shine. And it has this almost rusted look to it. So now we're going to take this green, hooker's green, um, it's a darker green, we're going to layer that on top of this. I'm going to dilute this a fair bit, I'll actually dilute that a little bit more, I want it to be really runny, well, let's add even more water to that. That's a little bit too much, but whatever. We'll roll with it. All right, and we'll just kind of let that sit. Let it pull up into all of the corners, into all the creases, and then uh, we'll come back when it's dry. All right, now the paint isn't dry just yet. And before it dries, we're going to take a little bit of a paper towel and start rubbing off some of the paint. We want to reveal some of the shininess through on the high areas. We don't want it to be completely perfect, completely perfectly covered. We want to kind of scrape off some of the, some of the paint. Yeah, you see. can even hit it with some uh, rubbing alcohol. At this point the brown layer is pretty dried on so it's not really going to get removed. We're just removing a lot of the, uh, the green that we just applied. We're giving it a bit of an inconsistent look. And then we're going to do another wash on top of that. Wash or glaze, I'm not actually sure what the proper terminology here is. As I said before, I don't really paint, but I feel like that's a good thing. As someone who doesn't paint, if I can achieve a decent looking result, so can everyone else. Going to hit the bridge of the nose, some of the high areas, going to reveal a lot of that shininess. This might take a bit of scrubbing, but it'll be worth it. Try to go kind of with the layer lines. I, see, I think that helps remove it a little bit better. All right, I think that's good. Now we're gonna make a, another, another little wash. This time it's not going to be quite as diluted. And we're mainly going to just hit the, uh, the dark areas, the corners, the crevices, just to get a little bit of extra contrast. Okay, then we're going to just kind of wipe off a little bit of it. Just kind of loose downward motions. 
All right, I think that's good. Let's let that dry. All right, again, before it's completely dried, we're just gonna start hitting some of the areas again. Just to kind of rub off some of the paint, give it a bit of an inconsistent look. I'm gonna use some rubbing alcohol again. Hit these corners a bit. One highlights on those areas. After this, we're gonna do about two more washes and we should be done. All right, let's mix up another wash. So we're gonna use a Viridian. This Viridian, Viridian green. It's like a turquoise color. I think, I don't fucking know my colors. I want this to be pretty diluted as well because we're gonna hit the whole thing with it. More diluted than that, actually. Just as an idea for how loose you can be with this shit, let's just do this. Right, you really don't have to be an expert painter for this. <laughs> Hell, you don't have to be competent. You can still get a decent looking effect. I'm adding some water on the top and then just kind of letting it drip down. All right, let's let that dry. All right, so it's not dry just yet, but as you can see, uh, we're getting some color variation in there, which is good. So let's go ahead and mix up a lighter version of this using this Viridian Green and some Titanium White. We're not gonna need much of this. Now some Titanium White. Actually wanna put in just a little bit more white. Yeah, that should be good. Now with this, I kind of want to just get it in a couple of areas. I don't want to... Uh... Actually, you know what? Let's just get it everywhere, and then we'll just brush off some, some of it. Kind of just going to dry brush this on in a lot of places. Ooh. Oh yeah, just dumped the whole thing in the paint too. That works. With this, we're going to have to work a little bit quicker. Because this will actually dry on. this and start wiping it off. In fact, let's get some water on this. And if it isn't dogs barking, birds chirping, it's a plane going overhead. Doing this outside was a mistake, but I don't have a nice lighting setup, so YOLO. See, so yeah, I think this is when it really starts to come together. All those other colors were just a foundation for this. Let's go ahead and uh, get some on the back as well. And on the base down here. Just kind of dotting the surface everywhere. All right, a bit more rubbing alcohol. What I'm trying to do is just kind of remove any of the obvious uh, paint marks and just make it look a little bit more natural. So anywhere like here where it looks like a brush actually hit it, I'm just gonna kind of remove that. The great thing about these washes or glazes or whatever the fuck it is we were doing uh, is that gravity kind of does the work for you. The fuck did I get white on me? Oh, oops, forgot to close it. All right, let's get a little bit more rubbing alcohol. <laughs> you know what? We could actually use a little bit of white on it later. Make it look like a bird shit on the statue or something. That extra bit of realism, you know? That only bird shit can provide. You know what? I might actually do that. Put a little white in here. Get our brush nice and wet. Some white on there and then just... God, I hope this is not getting on my lens. All right, let's wash the brush off. Let's just 
fuck, we probably should dump our brush in a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and then do this. That'll help, uh, cause shit dries quick. Just doing downward strokes here. Kind of smudging it a bit. Yeah, I kind of regret doing that, <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you. I didn't ruin the effect or anything, I just... I don't know, I guess I'm not a fan of bird shit. I'd like there to be a little bit of shine on the nose, so I'm gonna remove some paint. Some alcohol again. I just rub straight down on the nose. And a little, a couple of these little white spots wouldn't be bad, I just, I think I overdid it. Oh, well shit, that's new. Apparently you can just uh, rub all of the paint off, like I did there. So in case that happens, let's take a look at how to repair it. Because I think everything else here looks good enough. Let me just wipe a little bit more off the top here. A little bit off the face. I think that looks fine. I'm just going to let it dry. Alright, so... We need to fix this little area down here. Everything else I think looks good. Uh, it's just that little area where my thumb was that got ruined. So I'm gonna take some hooker green again. Mix it in with a little bit of water. And then just kind of cover that up. I might actually also take this opportunity to get into some of these cracks again. Pretty much anywhere where I was ho holding it. Anywhere where we have a highlight that's a bit too bright. We'll go ahead and hit it with some hooker green. Alright, let's let that dry. Alright, so we let that dry. So now I'm going to take a little bit of titanium white. Uh, titanium white and viridian. Mix those up. Just have very little bit of it on the brush. Just kind of dot this surface. Just put in a couple of areas where we went a little heavy before with the other stuff. I didn't really focus on the back all that much. Uh, you should probably do that. Focus a little bit more on it. I'm gonna water this down while it's on the surface a little bit. Yeah, I think what happened there, I was just holding on to it too long. I'm gonna brush a lot of this crap off later with rubbing alcohol. I'll probably do that off camera, because it's not really important. You've seen me do it already several times. <sighs> Let's see. I don't know, I think that looks pretty good. I think if we let this dry, we can pretty much leave it off here. You've got, let's move this closer to the camera, you've got some area showing through. So you can still see the copper underneath. It still has some of that shine, but it's been dulled by the brown that we added. And then the, uh, the various greens add a bit of color variation. And then finally this viridian green and white combo make it look like uh, make it look like that all right so once you've gotten to this point one of the things you can do is you can see this is still really light if this was made out of copper uh, even if it wasn't completely solid it'd still have some pretty good heft to it um, one of the ways you can do that is you can take plaster of paris so this stuff, plaster of Paris. As I was saying before my camera cut out, you can use plaster of Paris to give your print a little bit of extra weight to it. That way it'll look and feel like copper. To do this, all you have to do is mix up the solution and then inject it using a uh, a syringe or a funnel 
just cut a small hole using a drill, dremel, or even a knife uh, just at the bottom of your print somewhere where it's not going to be seen and then pour the solution into the print. Give it some time to uh, do its magic, to cure, and uh, that's it. It's completely optional, but if you want your prints to feel the way that they look, then it's a nice little thing to add. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or even tips, leave them down in the comment section below. If you want to support the channel, please mail Nicholas Cage interesting facts about yourself. It really helps the channel, and I'm sure he appreciates it. Thank you.